down smash. Down smash. That was no, oh, that's Kel actually talked to me about this once. He uh, he says he likes to do the back throw, and then when they screw up the di, he'll do a down air. I think down. he just missed the short. Yeah, off. that seems most likely. I, I don't, I don't see a reason to down smash this. Which is probably a miss, a miss of command. Yeah. It's hard to have a term for that. Like in, in what in StarCraft you just call it a miss Q or a miss click. Missed input. Missed input. Okay, yeah. Because like you don't have clicks or cues or anything like that. We just have buttons. Missed sticks. Oh well, we crouch cancel. It was a that flub. was a toe spread special. Toe spread wondering. special. Yeah, crouch cancel down smash. Well, just any smash attack. Yeah. Especially when he starts spamming it. That was a pretty questionable counter. Uh, no, I, feel like turn, I feel like Toast should have gotten punished yeah, by if that. If didn't turn yeah. around, it wouldn't have hit him. Yeah, it would have hit him if yeah. he didn't turn around. But it also turned around and, like, I, kind of, I think it moved him away from, like, the giant. I'm not 100%. Oh my gosh, Kel, Very please. nice. Yeah. 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 He missed the smash attack. Like, uh, that was actually awful. Uh, he missed the smash attack. He got really. Uh, yeah, yeah so Kel, Kel's just like, man, these kids. Nobody did. No, okay, there are two things back in the day when we played this game. Like before Brawl came out, Melee was big before. There, 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 these were things that never happened, right? Yeah. People didn't constantly ask for, for hand warmers, and people didn't didn't uh, rage quit out of the match. I think hand warmers started when like Street Fighter 4 came out, and they had to have button checks. So yeah. Then, uh, well, like there there are times when I feel it's very very appropriate, right? Like, like if you like if you've just been waiting, grandpa. Like, like if you've been waiting, if you haven't played forever, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. You know, or if you want to do a quick like, yeah, like if you, if you but Toast Brad had been playing, you know, he'd be off playing friendlies while we were waiting on uh, Luminoth, So yeah, I was playing against him, then he kicked him off my game. Thanks, ass. <laughs> if anyone's wondering, Doctor X is a jerk. Why? Because I was playing a game, and you're like, no, we've got a tournament. Yeah. Whatever. So this game's pretty well in Toastbread's favor right now, although uh, it was kind of like a questionable neutral's position there. He was kind of on his back foot, but then uh, Mark did something funny and uh, gave him a chance to get back. Oh, yeah. that's a solid two-stock lead, man. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's see how this transformation goes. I actually don't know what Falco <laughs> does against this. Tra he doesn't do that. Yeah. He like I should. Do that. I don't know why he did that. Like. I, I don't know. Actually. Put yourself in the pit where, like, yeah, Mark can forward smash from the pit to the other side, but uh, at least well, you can you move, if you're on the right side, you can corner. at least move away. So, yeah. All right, what I think he should do is I think he should grab the ledge again. Oh wait, no. Uh, Kel's smart about this. Kel, Kel, Kel's gonna up B if he goes down, but he shouldn't grab the ledge. You, in this situation, you just wait for it to go away. Yeah. Uh, well, I like to uh, grab the ledge and then use the invincibility to get a shine up on him. Uh. But Kel's probably watching for the invincibility. Alright, so... Kel's starting to regain control. Uh, I think it's because he stopped approaching. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of just like waiting for... Uh, <laughs> yeah, waiting for Toast Brad to do the, uh, do the aggressive thing. Yeah. <laughs> Could be a stock. That's a stock. Yeah, oh, that's a nice stock. combo. Very nice good combo. So yeah, that yeah. low percent, you know what I mean? Like, this this feels kind of questionable. I mean, like, these characters didn't do it back in the day, yeah. But, like, Toast Bread almost crouch cancel it. He doesn't care. Okay. <laughs> He's landing in a crouch by the laser anyway. Okay, so. Yeah, Toast so Bread is definitely better than better off than it started for Kel, but he's still got some work to do to make this happen. I mean, yeah, it's, it's still like a significant lead for Toast Bread, but... Oh, if he had gotten that tech chase. Oh! Doesn't matter, I guess. I had a taunt instead of a ledge guard, and he just still... No, no, that was, that was, it. That was <laughs> him tricking Toast Bread into thinking that uh, he wasn't guarding it, so he made him pick. So Toast Bread's like, I'm going to pick the aggressive option. Straight, and, up, uh, straight up kill him with a tipper almost. Yeah. Kel is bringing it back. Oh yeah. Kel's, I think Kel's definitely benefiting from the transform more. Oh, very nice. Very nice comeback from Like, look Kel. at that. The trans... Huh? It's 3 out of 5. It's winter, winner's finals. Yes, yeah, winner's finals.
No bands now. Yeah, no bands. <laughs> Doing it again. Yeah, this transformation, especially near the end, were really helping Kel though. Like that uh that kill right at the end, like the platform. Yeah, I was gonna say that the platform rose up. Yeah. He picked a good angle, it's just uh yeah. Amida Kel can not go peach you against Toast Bread. He tried uh, that months ago before Toast Bread was good and it didn't work. So <laughs> I don't know, he might do it. I don't know if I like He it. might do it in Grand Finals. If he's Maybe. Maybe. He is indeed on the winner's side, which it looks like he will be so far. He's not count to spread out yet. Oh my gosh, it's brutal. So, um, a couple weeks ago, Toastbread and I were, uh, playing friendlies with uh, Kel and Overswan, and uh -huh. it would always be like, um, at, when the night first started, we were like going pretty even, like we might like get a game or two, but uh, like they were still consistently beating us. Yeah. Towards the end of the night though, they started three stalking us pretty consistently. Yeah. And I think that that's just because um, when you get like these really experienced players like Kel and Overswarm, they can just continually adapt and like pick up your habits more and more over time, faster than you're able to adjust to them. Yeah. So uh, I mean, the, yeah. I mean, there's that, and also just getting the rust off. Also. Yeah. You know, they don't, they don't. Um, like play that regularly outside of you know events like this or you know when you guys want to hang out with them like they don't practice quite as much as say Toast Bread does like Toast Bread yeah. as far as I know plays every day if he can <laughs> uh, right actually right here uh, Toast Bread managed to get the ledge on that side and he had an invincibility he could have done a drop down down air and like uh, popped him up and possibly like comboed him and killed him but uh, he decided to just back off. I'm kind of wondering if I did. It. Maybe just like a little bit of nerves, trying to play too safe. I mean, I don't know. Like, if I'm down two games, that's not a trick I want to be trying. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, that's me. Maybe I just have tendency to play scared. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, it's pretty even. You gotta remember though, uh, that means Toast Bread figured something out because like Kel came back from a two stock deficit last game. So Toast Bread had to adjust something otherwise this would not be going even. Yeah. Well, so much for that. Okay, so... Toast Bread's still keeping the lead. Um, oh man, that could have been a nice combo, but... Apparently I'll cancel the side B is not the thing. Fumbles, we can't we make can't, you a lot. We yeah, can't actually not, log on right now. In. Otherwise, I would have timed password that is that is saved on the machine is incorrect, so we yeah. can't actually. Besides, why would I make you a mod? You're dumb. <laughs> you'll, you'll ban people for talking for saying ice climbers are stupid. <laughs> you'll have to ban the whole world because that's what the whole world thinks. Just so you know, fumbles. Okay. All right. So that transformation did not this go as poorly as I was hoping. This has been a pretty. Uh, Pretty relaxed pace of the match, you know, for, for like a melee winner's finals. You can yeah. see we're about ready to hit the four minute mark and the game is still going. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, uh, like, Toast Bread's just like had the lead and had been comfortable a couple times, but he's just been play trying to play too safe. Or, like, uh, you know, he, he usually, like, he'll try to end stuff really quickly or just, like, you know, go full out, but now he's, like, playing a little bit more patiently. So that was, that would have been pretty cool. What, what the interesting. Hell? What is what is going on? <laughs> Kel's like, this is like, like he's pulling I, I, out every gimmick right now yeah. in game three. Like he's got, he's still got his hands on his controller, right? But like I can see Kel, like in his mind, is doing the the Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he he upbeats straight down in the stage. <laughs> that used to be meta, man. Like with Fox, you, yeah, you yeah. do that and up smash out of it. Uh, oh, right. Well, uh, it's the meteor if it's all the way on the side, so that's what he was going for. Yeah, I think Toast Bread's just like, I don't know, 
trying to get Kel to the point where he can do that and it'll kill him without the AI. Oh, uh, he could have back. He could have dropped that back air. Forward tilts. That's. that's yeah. really cool. I'm pretty sure what he's trying to do. I'm pretty sure what he was trying to do is just like uh, shoot lasers, get him frustrated, and then uh. Yeah, well, he's got a. What's up? Oh, well, he's got to move through two counter yeah. picks. Shoot, la uh, shoot lasers, get him frustrated, and then just uh, spend time. Okay, like, I gotta play forward tilting him and taking yeah. advantage of every Yo, small open. I need someone to come over here though. Do you want? To All right, so Kel goes to FD, which is painful, as we can already see. He drops it, but like, here's the thing: like a lot of uh, a lot of like players around like Toast Red's level, when they get out of it. They'll immediately like do an option because they think the Mart's going to go for the regrab. But Kel's a good Mart, so he knows that uh, Toastbread needs to wait. Or Toastbread, or he needs to wait to actually hit Toastbread when he drops the chain grabs. So yeah, Toastbread, he's thinking, oh man, I'm getting chain grab. I need to immediately like do something when he drops it, but it's not really helping him. Okay, so another grab, and oh man. Toastbread just froze there. Okay. Oh, that was a good crouch cancel. I would have missed that crouch cancel personally. I always miss that crouch cancel actually, so. Okay. So it kind of feels like he's almost playing like Fox usually does on this on this stage, or plays this matchup like Foxes do on the stage, where he uh runs around and shoots lasers and tries to use his mobility, but that doesn't work too well against Marth when Marth can run under the lasers and uh, take advantage of his mobility. But now he's kind of like switching up and being aggressive. He's, I guess I don't know. Switching between the two a fair amount. It feels like Toastbread just like isn't ready for a lot of the situations he's put in. Like, uh... How that side B hit him there. He was completely out of hit stun. He was just standing there. He wasn't prepared for anything. So, Kel was definitely taking advantage of that. Kind of in his head. Does Toast have a lot of Marth experience? Uh, I don't actually know how much Marth experience Toast Red has. I, he doesn't play too many Marths in Cincinnati that often. Uh, but, like, I don't know about his uh, UCLA experience that he's got. Uh... This is just painful. There's nothing to talk about here. Hey, don't DI like that. That's that's, how you, that's what you do. So yeah, stuff's looking pretty grim for him. He's probably like, I think anxious and wants to hit him. And stuff like this happens because of it. Something that like uh, players like Toast Bread, who tend to be really aggro, have problems with is uh, slowing it down once they fall behind. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, you just gave them a lead, you don't want to give them an even bigger lead by doing something stupid, so... And something Kel's actually really good at, because he's a patient player, is uh, getting a lead and extending it really hard. Uh, like, he, and he even did something that, like, he can afford to take risks at this point, uh, like that up B, and it's not making that much of a difference. No. There's so many slots, he's yeah. so good for to play around with. I feel like uh, Toastbread needs to just like try to save the laser to get him in the shield because Kel Kel's not handling the shield pressure very well. Unless Toastbread like when Toastbread gets right on top of him, when he spaces the back airs, then Marth's okay with that because he's not getting a constant attack and get out. So uh, you know, get up there. He can do some double shines, you know, do some double shines and uh, pillar him. That's a bad full hop. We got nowhere to go at that point. Yeah. All right. One second. Hey, Will. Have you had food? Damn it. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna watch Kel play Pichu against uh, Computer. All right. This sounds legit. And uh, he's gonna show us how to get Falco's with Pichu. Or combo him. He might combo him. I don't. I'm not 100 sure. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Yep, it's the game. Yep. <laughs> Level one never foxes are not very good at getting out of that. Does he actually play Pichu against real people? Um, against people he thinks he's much better than. Fair if he enough. thinks he can beat them with Pichu, he'll pull out the Pichu. I'm not sure if he'll pull it out against Toastbread. Yeah. Uh, if Toastbread proceeds in the Grand Finals. 
Although Jesper might have to go through Ragu. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Ragu, uh, there was a, uh, an Illuminati tournament yesterday, and Ragu and Toastbred were in Grand Finals and Winter Finals. Uh, Toastbred won in Winter's Finals, but Ragu, like, 3-1 to him in uh, the first set of Grands. Oh, and then the second set went all the way to Game 5, last stock, really intense, so. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, when Kel pauses, it's to show you how cute Pichu is, by the way. <laughs> He doesn't care uh, what the set counts at. He's just gonna show you how cute Pichu is. Makes sense. Also, if you're noticing, anything that he does now can be smashed the eye or isn't a real combo. It's just. Yeah. That that might be. Yeah. You know. Although I feel like the Falco could have jumped out. <laughs> I, is this? Are these going to be just friendlies? Oh, you're wait, oh, is that losers finals? Oh, is that loser semis? Why is that set? Why is that not on stream? If that's a set, why is it not on stream? Okay, I'm gonna go check the bracket real quick. Uh, try to talk to the stream, I guess, until I get back. Okay, commentate so often. Alright, so I'm assuming that Kale's probably the beach here. Let's see what we got on here. I can't tell. Is that the bracket? Yeah, this is the tablet that Steve got for the bracket. Yeah, so Dr. X and Brian are in a loser semis right now. Uh, Steve apparently beat Ragu, so. Yeah. Is Steve Dr. X or is that someone else? Uh, Steve is Dr. X, okay. Oh shit, I put the wrong person in Grand Finals. Okay, and then Toastbread's waiting on, uh, that. I don't know why they didn't wait, like, there's not that many matches left. It's still, it's all pretty early still. Like, yeah. Benny's not gonna close anytime soon. Yeah, it's only 10. So, yeah. I don't know, some of us here are old, we must be tired. Yeah, Kel's really old. Sorry, yeah, you actually, yeah, even you're just as old. Hey, I'm not rocking the 25 myself. Oh. Yeah. People like fumbles and toast spreaders to like 19 and 18, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it uh, makes me feel kind of bad. I mean, I'm still like, I'm kind of in the middle of that, I'm 22, so yeah. Okay. I, I assumed you're like 17 or something. You assumed I was 17? Yeah. <laughs> grow, grow up, hey, dear. You look Shoutouts to Confuzzled Gaming because uh, he asked us in the chat. Oh, sweet. And uh, everyone who's watching the stream is apparently on able to listen to the chat, too. Yeah. I mean, I understand I understand it's moving pretty quickly, but yeah, I'll, I'll give you guys a shout out, anyways. Okay. So I don't know why Kel's playing Peach. Probably because he wanted to expose Dosti. He wanted to what? He wants to expose him. I don't know, man. I feel like I'm surprised he's just like not trying to work on his Sheik right now. Hmm. Since according to him, he doesn't want to play Mark because Mark is just bad. Really? Yeah. Uh. Well, he basically like thinks that like the matchups Mark does win, uh, Sheik wins them harder. And uh, except for Spacey's, like he'll play Mark. Oh, actually, he plays Mark. He said he'd play Mark against Spacey's, but uh, I don't know why he's playing Peach right now. Funsies. <laughs> Ex-Fumbies, no Johns, could have walked. Oh, uh, that's just Fumbles. What's that? Fumbles is saying uh, he wanted to start Fumbles. playing Smash when he was 9. Yeah, but he could have yeah. used plenty of rides. He could have walked there if he's really determined. That's all I'm saying. Dude, if I was 9 and walked like thirty, walked like a 30 minute car ride to get to a Smash Fest, I'm pretty sure my mom would flip out. Uh, yeah, I mean, back then mothers would have. Like, nowadays I see like little kids walking alone all the time. So I think just parents stop caring. Yeah, well every little kid has a cell phone nowadays. That's so. true too, yeah. Back when Melee was like first starting, you know. Anyone who's like younger than 16 and has a cell phone is a spoiled brat. Yeah. I don't even remember cell phones existed back then. They didn't even have one until I was like 17. I'm uh, actually watching The Wire right now, and uh, it's amazing like how uh, the first season, like all this wiretapping they do is on payphones. And it's like, haven't 
they, they mentioned like half of these people heard of cell phones, but like it was still like a pretty unknown thing. Yeah. And then like by the time this uh the wire ends, like they're on like prepaid cell phones and stuff like that. Like you know every every drug dealer is buying like prepaid cell phones to avoid wiretaps. Yeah. Oh whoa, so fumbles could go, but Game Junkie said you needed to be ten. Oh, I didn't know that. They remember you should have an eleven. Well, they did have two different um, little kid tournaments, like junior divisions. Yeah. Um, when I was younger, I like tried. When I was like 12, I tried to get my parents to let me do it, and uh, I made a post in like um, one of the Smash boards, started talking about Smash Fest, and my mom was like, "No, you can't go to this." Event. You're 12. These people, uh, we've never heard of them, and the internet's scary. So, yeah. Uh, game Junkie shut down pretty early. I forgot about that. Yeah. I don't remember quite when it was, but it was a very sad day. I don't know. They still held the Hellion event not too long ago, though. Yeah, that was, that was just like kind of a shout out, though. They don't have a charge store or anything, though. Yeah, like every like they used to do it every season they'd have a reunion event, and then like the three years went by or something, they didn't do one. Then they just had one this summer. Yeah. Which I moved back to Ohio like two days after it, so I had to miss it. So I don't, know, I don't like talking about the Smash Up just because like a lot of, I don't know, personally as like a player, I don't like playing against low tiers when people are sandbagging me. Or like, just I don't like playing against my main against low tiers because like, if, if I beat them, it's just because it's like, okay, yeah, you beat them, you know, you're, you're doing try hard stuff. Uh, and if I like don't against people like Kel, then I'll lose. And I'll just, that's just as embarrassing, so I don't know. It's a lose-lose situation. I feel like sometimes I do worse against low tier just because I don't have any magic experience against them. What? Yeah, I... I don't know. I don't, I don't like playing too many people who are actually like low tier mains nowadays though. Uh, like I played against someone who like pulled out a Luigi, but like Luigi's not exactly low tier. Yeah. yeah I mean like, like I played Budogen and a Baton tournament, so it's like... <laughs> yeah. Luigi um, can be scary. But I, but I knew how to beat the Luigi, so that's yeah. it. Okay, so, I don't know. I, I have no idea how this match is supposed to go. I feel like Falco just, like, does stuff like this. Just down air, then pops him up, and then... When down air stops comboing, it'll probably kill him off the top anyway. So. Probably. Does Pichu have any favorable matchups? Any what? Any good matchups? Like, Kirby, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Depending on maybe Zelda, I don't know. Pichu seems like he could uh, use the mobility for actually something good. Yeah. I swear, yeah, Zelda's actually a character in this game. Uh, Mita, I've played Green Ranger in tournaments for uh, DK, and uh, yeah, it's really, it's really, it sucks playing against Green Ranger. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want like Green Ranger, like so, some of the old school guys. They uh. They're like pretty like set set in their mind about uh, how they feel about characters. Like uh, Kel will say something like, "Mars just bad." I kind of want like um, uh, like Green Ranger or Bait or someone to just like come down and beat them like really really hard. Uh, Donkey Kong or Luigi or like the Lake. The Lake is a Zelda main in freaking uh, Pittsburgh and is like one of the best players in Pittsburgh too. Damn. Yeah, Pittsburgh's a fun city. Half the mains are, uh, half the mains are low tiers, the other half are foxes, so, <laughs> makes sense. I've actually seen two foxes here in Arcade Legacy, yeah, you and, uh, Dr. X. Yeah, the, since that he doesn't have too many foxes, I think part of that's because, um, well, I guess there's Risner, but Risner, like, doesn't play fox like fox. <laughs> but, um, there's, like, a lot of new players in Cincinnati, so, they all I seem feel like to be Puff or Marth. For the most and Sheik, so there's far. a lot of Sheiks too. Are there? Yeah, there's Brian and uh, Regu, and then I play I play with a bunch of Sheiks at the CSRs too. Yeah, um, I haven't yet been to go out to one of those yet. But like, uh, they're players that, like they're characters that you can like start um, when you don't have too much tech skill, and then like your you know, your movement will develop pretty naturally with them and stuff like that, and like That's you won't true. be like screwed over because you can't like wave shine or anything. So yeah, yeah, it's like. 
It's just like good for newer players, people who don't like want to spend, and also people who don't want to spend time time in the room just like grinding tech skill, like me and Toast Red do. So. Yeah, yeah. And I guess uh, Dr. X did eventually, so. Uh, is it Brian then versus? Okay, so we're going to have Luminoth, aka Brian, uh, playing against Toast Bread, aka Will. I'm probably going to call them by their names because I'm bad at long Toast Bread names. Or Luminoth. So who does Luminoth play? So, Luminoth is a sh one of the Sheik mains that I was talking okay, about. Okay, gotcha. uh, He's pretty good. He was apparently like one of the best in Ohio for Brawl before uh, Brawl kind of died in the state, and now he's switched to Melee. So, surprise, surprise, they're going to Battlefield first game, just like every other match. Battlefield or bust. Yeah. And, uh, Toast Bread says that if he ever starts laser camping against the one, then it's because he respects them. So he probably respects Brian right now, considering how the start of the game just went. Uh, I don't know how close these matches usually are. I think uh, Toast Bread like, usually has the edge in it. But Brian has a lot of Falco experience just with uh, how he plays Solar Sin all the time. Uh, and then he also, like, Toast Bread had a really tough, really, some really tough sets against Riku yesterday. So uh, he might be wary for the Sheik matchup. Uh, he missed the annual. This is uh, why I hate the stage against Sheik, because I feel like I'd rather play on Fountain or Dreamland or something more than this stage, because, like, you, if you get off the stage, then you're dead. You can't, like, ride up the side or anything with your Firefox or, be, trick, or trick them out with your recovery. They just, uh, you know, throw the needles, and then when you try to sweet spot, they can just grab the ledge. So. Yeah. If they really want to, they each jump at you in forward air. Yeah. You can't, yeah, like, uh, you can't just, like, ride up to make them think that you're not going to sweet spot so they throw the needles. Yeah. Because that's what the, that's what the Sheik's here love doing. They love throwing the needles for the game. Uh, which, I mean, I guess it's understandable against Falco, because... Yeah. Falco and Needle will kill him. Alright. Typical edge guard, uh, Brian gets his jump back. But, you know, just rinse and repeat. Alright, so... Brian apparently noticed that Toast Bread isn't that good at getting it all the way to the end of the ground, so... He's kind of using the crouch. I feel like this is one of the situations again where uh, Joseph feels, well, I'm down, I technically have to be aggressive, so I'm going to be really aggressive, and it's not working out too well for him. He's like, he got 50% and I took 120. That was a smart angle. Why don't I do that ever? I... Oh, that was a beautiful attack by Toast Red, but... And he'll, I guess he, like, yeah, uh, she only got a diner. Uh, or dash attack Remit. Let him survive for a little bit, at least. Yeah. Yeah, something that, like, uh, Brian and Ragu like doing for, like, this matchup is, uh, you know, just make it so that, like, you want to hit them, but you can't hit them, and it'll look like you can hit them. And then they just wait for you to do, like, a simple, uh, easily punishable option. Like, uh, um, I'll point it out. It's usually like it's most apparent after a combo because everyone after they get combo wants to hit someone, hit them immediately. Yeah. So uh, like after uh, Brian gets com or after uh, Brian gets a combo or something, watch for Toast to do something like overly aggressive. Like you know attack when he should. Now Toast playing a little bit more safe. He's like kind of a uh, actually outspacing the Sheik with his tilts. So uh, it's nothing that's really easily punishable and. Uh, can't cover too well. That was actually um, a good crouch against the fly. Uh, yeah, a really good crouch, crouch against my Toast Bread. That's pretty much like the last crouch against he could have gotten. Uh, so he got a kill from it, so really good. Okay. So, yeah, look right there. He got comboed, he did the tech, jumps up, and then. Uh, Comes down with the back air. Brian's ready, back airs him immediately, and then I guess this happens, but like Yeah, like he'll do uh people will do like a repetitive movement option after they like get hit and comboed. And like some people just immediately attack, other people's dash dance and then attack. Brian and Aaron are both really good at picking up on that and uh, just punishing you immediately. Or punishing you for what you do. Yeah, just so they're pretty good at reading you then. Yeah. Huh. 
But like, I mean, it's, it's not as much about reading the neutral game, though, as much as it is uh, just being able to read you when you're in a pressure situation. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, see, so like, he, he spaced himself so that, like, anything he does uh, is going to be punished, and then he'll, he didn't need to just react to that force smash, he didn't even need to read it or predict it. Just put him in some pressure. So now Toastbird's got to play patient with the edge guard, like you always have to do. Oh, man. I feel like uh, Toastbird, what Toastbird should have done is he should have, uh, when he saw Sheik going low, drop down and then shine back here. Yeah. Uh, but he was uh, playing a little bit too conservative, I guess. Yeah, this time it's all together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, air dodging against Sheik on when you're on the edge always feels like a good idea, but if she picks like her fast option, then she can still cover it anyways, so... Yeah, he does that, and then... Bad spot for him. Yeah. That was set up, uh... He was on the edge and he tried to do the poke thing, though. Yeah. Uh, Brian just crouch canceled that and like, I'm at 0%, and that's not gonna give me any knockback. Did it, but very good combo from Tuspray yeah. to get back into it. Nice read on that. Yeah. So it's still definitely a match, uh, unless, you know, Tuspray gets gimped. But yeah. RPSDs. He's, he's gonna need to be uh, really careful or get like some, a really good lead to start off. Yeah, that was supposed to be a downer. I feel like the downer would have hit, so that's kind of frustrating. Oh, that's a really greedy forward smash, but really good crouch cancel. Yeah, didn't get much of punish from it. I feel like he could have a better option than down smashing. I feel like if he just, like, shine back or something when he goes that far up, then yeah. he covers it a lot better and probably sends him off at a little bit further away. Oh, that's going to sweet spot, though, so... That's, a. Uh... Toastbread's slowing it down, and uh, if uh, both players are playing it slow on the edge, I feel like uh, the player on the edge is going to take advantage of it, because he can just pick an option and the other person has to react to it. Uh, very good combo. This could be it. Let's see if he can get... No, he's uh, not feeling it. Didn't turn around properly, so he just backed up to the edge guard. That's oh, man. Yeah. So Toastbread's got like some pretty solid Taco Shield pressure, but uh, there are instances like that where uh, he'll screw up the shield pressure, and he does like the shine, and he does a full hop shine over you, and uh, Sheik's near out shield just eats that up. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Station. Okay. And this is what's like frustrating about Sheik, especially as a space player, like. She gets one hit and then suddenly on your back foot and she can tech chase you for days and her tech chases just cover so many options. It's not like it's uh, overpowered, it's just like there's so many options that you can try out and uh, she can cover them all at once. So, uh, yeah. So where are we in this tourney? Uh, I think this is... This is Loser's Finals, actually. Yeah. Uh, Kel is waiting in Grand Finals. Oh, no. A good gem. Or I guess edge guard. And this is 2 0 right now, right? Yeah, uh, Brian's up 2 0. See, like, he could forward smash there. Yeah. Or just, like, back air him. Uh, the down smash sends him straight to the ledge and he can get through. Yeah, it seems to be his go to. Uh, if you're wondering, the Falco is Toast Bread and the Sheik is Lumino. Power of Shield for Laser while he's invincible, so... Yeah. Hit with the needle to stay on the ground like that. Yeah, Sheik's the guy with the spear on the right. This is looking 
pretty bad for Toast Bread. Uh, oh, very good fast pass. I didn't think he got the fastball time. Uh, Toast Bread. He started doing this thing where like he'll go off somewhere weird when he wants to like reset or like trick someone out and then just like fire burn at them. And uh that's like gets a couple people sometimes, but Igar Kel actually in grand finals just like people are thinking, oh he's he did an input error, he's definitely not gonna come at me and I can't cover him if he goes away. Yeah. And like just wait there. So that's we're actually getting uh, the benefit from the slow get up there. I think that's it. Oh wait, no, my bad. Okay, so I feel like Brian can afford to just like try to approach with power shield at this point. Yeah. Just like, oh my god, he throws this out. Nope. Okay. Toastbread almost brought it back. Uh, okay. Yeah. Made a good show, though. So Made let's see. Let's see if we actually get to see the Pichu then. Because Kel definitely wants to play the Pichu. Okay. You think he's gonna get Pichu in Grand Finals? Yeah. What's up? No one. No one in chat is talking about you. <laughs> there, there was one guy who wanted to know who you were. Uh. Burning 3B, 3 by 1, I guess? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so, uh, oh, I was going to talk to him, but I guess he doesn't want to talk about it that much. Salty from the loss. Yeah, what a nerd. Okay, so Kel is just going more. I wonder if he, uh, his old man jeans are getting in and uh, are picking up, and uh, he's got to end it quickly. I, I guess he doesn't really feel like he wants to play the Sheik Ditto at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'd prefer a Sheik Ditto to Marth versus Sheik myself. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty bad for Mark, but I guess he just wants to play his main and end it quickly. Yeah. Okay. So reads, though. this matchup I'm not as comfortable with, but there's a more player. Like, can you talk about it a little? Um, not really. I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't really talk much on the technical side. I mostly play purely by reflex. I feel like, um, just like the character styles in general, they're both like really defensive, but Sheik has the advantage in the matchup because, uh, like, her stuff is a little bit less punishable. Uh, and she's got the needles to force her to approach. Yeah. And she's got a better, like, she's got a really simple punish game with her grabs. Uh, that's kind of what I think about for the matchup. Uh, yeah, she does have a lot of stuff that's really uh, effective on a single hit. And Marth, to be effective, really has to chain his stuff. Yeah, Marth has to get like a really good combo, which I can, yeah, it's like, it's doable on Sheik, it's just uh, sometimes it can be really difficult. He doesn't really come from grabs as much, he's got a tech chase from, from the grabs. Yeah. Um, she can get a sustain combo off the grabs, can get a chain grab off the grabs. Uh, yeah, well I know the chain grabs, uh, obviously. Uh, Shira. Uh, Brian somehow got that ledge guard. I was really surprised he actually got to the back to the ledge in time. Okay. Brian, Brian, not knowing what to do. I don't think he uh, he could just like ledge dash, but he, I, don't, I don't know if he's like just doesn't know how to do it. But if he does an invincible ledge dash, he can just grab him right there. Yeah. Like de she definitely has a lot of options. Just watch Mita King play. He loves that situation. Okay, so, yeah, he just did a forward tilt with the grab, and uh, Kel smartly DI'd up and away to the platform. Uh, I feel like if you DI up anyways, though, then if she goes for, like, a forward tilt chain, then Martin just dropped down there. So, I think uh, Brian might not be nearly as experienced in this matchup as our old, as our 80s player, Kel. Yes. Because uh, there aren't too many Marts really in Cincinnati. Or, like, a really experienced Marts, that is. Like, there's Kel, but, uh, or not Kel, there's Salt and Kel, but, like, uh, they're kind of, like, almost a blue moon, just because, uh, and, and you as well. Like, you, you play Marth, you're pretty solid at it, but, like, uh, you're not around, 
you haven't been to as many uh, stuff as we have been to. Yeah, so, that's like, very true. You know, he's got a lot more experience in like the, the Sheik matchup, the Falco matchup, probably the Fox matchup, so... Yeah. Kel goes for an up tilt there, I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, it seemed like he walked away and misspaced the up tilt because of it, so... Oh, Ryan know he tried to get up for the up Ryan, twice, Ryan so. tried to bait out with the get up attack or something, and uh, Kel just stands up and punishes his income. On Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Is that what Steve, Steve talked about that? Yeah. 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 I'll see you around. I assume that's oh, you're leaving? Okay. Alright. So, uh... Yeah? Oh, uh... It's in, like... There's a green bag over there. I'll just be right, I'll just be, I'll be right back. I sold a controller. I've got to get, get All right. back. So, counter to Dreamland. Obviously, Mar paints the stage normally. Is that a good choice? Okay, so Brian's definitely uh, behind, but still in it. Uh, really got a good chance to get the stock quickly, but not when that happens. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. That was sexy. Kel did the, uh... I I'm surprised Brian jumped immediately. Like, I'm also surprised Kel did the immediate force before his match, though, so... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Normally, more experienced players wait, but... I guess they're both smart enough to... make the decision to not wait. Okay, so... Finally closed up the stock, but definitely like could have gotten a couple of the edge guards there uh, and been even or like you know a lot closer than this. Uh, it's kind of funny though because uh, Kels seems like he's playing the matchup more aggressively, uh, and Brian just like isn't ready for this aggression. Like he just. Kel saw that Brian was on the edge and then just like put him there and said, I'm gonna throw my sword out there. He would walk into it and I'll copy you. Like, see, it's happening again. He's uh, letting Brian run away and needle camp him and then just like zoning him out. Brian doesn't need to know, uh, know how to get zoning. And that's something that like uh, a lot of characters can have problems with too. Uh, Mark definitely loves it when his uh, opponent is like stuck on the ledge and has to go through these giant walls of hitboxes. Ryan gets a good grab off though, and uh, should be able to close it out. Or he'll just not try to yeah. recover. Uh, this is uh, actually not nearly as bad for uh, Ryan as it could be, because he's getting to that percent where uh, Marth has trouble killing, and Marth also has trouble edge guarding cheek. So, yeah. oh, okay, I say that, I'll do and it, he gets the kill move. I'm trying to stay positive, it's just not working too well. Okay, so... Kinda wondering where Brian's planning on going Game 3. Uh, I'd like to get straight back to Dreamland again. Yeah, I'd, I'd like, I definitely want a big stage, and uh, FD is definitely not a stage that he wants to go to. It's hard, so... Yeah, like, you wanna... He probably wants to avoid this situation right here. Where he's stuck in the corner, and that's why he's making the bigger stage, but it's just not working out too well for him. I don't know. I feel like he's, uh. Like, on this stage, it's a little bit more feasible to like, use the platforms to help his movement. 
Uh, cause Mark's sword doesn't immediately hit up there, but... I don't know, Mark's got that quick forward air. And... You can tell he's kinda scared, because, uh, he got that attack off- He got Kel on the ground there, and then just, like, stood there and charged the eels, and let Kel roll away. And get back to a neutral position. Like... Come on, she, she's got some of the best tech chasing in the game. As Kage would yeah. say, uh, Kel's aura is too strong. Uh, what? As Kage would say, Kel's aura was too strong. Yeah. So it mentally scared him away. Yeah, yeah. Sucks. <laughs> okay, so... Now he's, like, kind of, I guess, trying to stay in the range where he can, like, box him. Uh... But, you know, like... It only gets you so far when he stays outside of your grab range. Uh, and you're not landing a good tilt on it. That was a pretty weird trade. I didn't even see my sword. Kel's definitely been uh, getting a lot of mileage out of this, uh, these FBs. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's choosing that because it's the best option or just because he wants to kill that way. Uh, I feel like he thinks it's a, it's a fast kill move. Yeah. Uh, so it might leave him vulnerable, but like... Brian's punish game is definitely not on against Mars, so I don't know if like anything too bad will happen from the missed uh, upbees. Oh, that was... He was waiting for that jump right there, but he just missed spaces down here. Yeah. Brian, I think, tried to get Kel to cover an option that wasn't the ledge, but Kel didn't care. He'll let you get back to the stage if you're stuck with Zelda. Yeah. Brian needs to be careful with how he approaches Mark there, really, because, like, against, play, play, against uh, characters like Fox and uh, Falco, they don't really have the tools to go through Sheik's giant aerials, but Mark definitely does, and he can definitely uh, really get a lot from Sheik approaching him, or at least through the air. Sheik definitely wants to stay really grounded against Mark. Yeah. Oh, it, everyone, everyone knew that that grab was coming, and it got him killed. Okay, so that's Grand Finals. Kel is still better than us. Yep. No surprise there. Uh, although, Brian definitely did showing. I know Toastbrain usually gets the edge of, edge of Brian, but, uh, yeah. Good games to everyone. Indeed. I'm gonna go get some food. I'm probably gonna get home. Viewers, I thought about going to beat you, but I didn't want to like. <laughs> what if I won? <laughs> I would just, if you want to beat you, if you want to talk to them, you gotta put your uh, the headset on, yeah. or at least try to speak. Oh, the mic. Really yeah. By the way, guys, I gotta get you. I'm like right by your house. Right house. Okay, we're gonna be one exit farther, but. And Kane is already far away from where I live anyway, so it's actually like 15 minutes away from where we live. It's pretty close. Because yeah. you just take 275. You take 475. Oh, wait, no, you ain't have to take 475. You just take 275. Hi, Cassie. Hi, Cassie. Why do you get throw more needles? Um, here, stop. You want me to do this? Here, I'll show you.